Somalia, Ethiopia, some ancient Joseph. The reason why our nights have worked, yeah, is because when we started, that you know, they always say whether it's like in music or in business or in love or in life, they say like it's all about being in the right place at the right time. We love the music. That's what it is. Because like at the end of the day, the thing that's making people go crazy or just have a good time is the music. So we we're really just channels for the music. That's what a DJ is. But there's an element of where the art of the DJ comes in. It's in the presentation. So I think we, after all these years, you know, we, we're skilled in presenting the music. So Spoon Mumalo was the first one to give me uh, a chance to DJ on the streets, you know, in his club called, uh, which was called uh, Politu Bureau. I do remember some of the first early moments at uh, Politu Bureau, you know, and then the Tando era, you know, things just got bigger, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking of like, you know, maybe from 5, 10, 20 people, 40, 50, next thing is 2000. The reason why I stayed in South Africa was because the dance all night kicked off and I was actually planning to go back to the UK. It's a reggae thing, right? And the thing about reggae, whether it's dance hall or it's reggae, whether it's Rasta or whether it's just like what we say bashment vibes like like you know reggae lovers you know like dancehall vibes and all the rest of it the thing about this culture is once you're in it it's not even like you've got stars and fans it's more like you've got soldiers and troops You know, I mean, like, you know, it has always been my passion. I mean, I fell in love with the music around about 1986, you know, in the ghettos of Harare, you know. 1986, that's like another eight years before the list of Mandela, you know. Southern Africa was on the revolutionary stand, you know what I'm saying, and reggae was like bringing that revolutionary stand, you know what I'm saying. So, it's so unfortunate that, I mean, that uh, reggae was not allowed on that to, to have taken that political stand in South Africa, but everywhere out there, there were songs done by reggae people chanting down apartheid, chanting down Obawa. What's he done? Why has he been in prison so long? Living in a prison, it ain't not fun. Most of the day, you don't see the sun. You wonder if your woman and your children, are they good? Are they having better education? What this thing is, it be become a fundamental part of my life. Um, I mean, I, ju I just love playing the music once a week. It's just as simple as that. I was pushing bongo muffin, you know, putting, putting those reggae elements in bongo muffin and pushing the dancehall sound system on the streets. I was really teaming up with some very great people who were inspired, Andy on the dancehall, hardcore reggae side of things, Stone and Tandy Square and Speedy on the bongo muffin side of things, you know. So I was, I was quite lucky, you know, definitely. But if you get into a music that is part of a culture, like Kwaito, for example, right like actually uh, most of our south african music like reggae then you're not just joining a fashion you're entering a story and that's why it's so hard to come out once you go in <laughs> <laughs>